Hello everyone, P from 41 here, and welcome back to my very messy workbench. Today I'm going to be doing a technical video about afterfire solenoids, or backfire solenoids if you prefer that term. Now, despite the fact that these have been used on small engines for 20 some odd years or so, there's a lot of misinformation about them. So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, need to talk about what they are, what they do, how they work, um, what happens when they fail, and some of the common myths and misconceptions surrounding them. So on the bench here I have two carburetors. This one over here is a Walbro LMT, and over here we have a standard Nikki carburetor. Both of them have backfire solenoids on them. These are some of the most common carburetors you're going to come across when working on small engines. They were both used on the Briggs & Stratton Intech series, which is what these particular carburetors are from. Now the backfire solenoids are these little devices on the bottom of the carburetor, and they do come in different uh, shapes, sizes, configurations, but they all function basically the same. You'll notice that the Walbro LMT has this shorter one, whereas the Nikki has a longer, skinnier one, but they both serve the same purpose and function in pretty much the same way. So let's get right into it. What exactly do these backfire solenoids do? Well, the answer is kind of in the name. But to be more precise, they have one purpose, that is to prevent backfires when the engine is turned off. That's it. That's all they do. Now to understand how they do this, you first have to understand what causes the backfire. Now when you turn off the key on a lawnmower, on a riding lawnmower, uh, to shut the engine off, what you're doing is you're grounding out the ignition coil, which kills the spark to the engine. This doesn't stop the engine right away. It doesn't bring it to a grinding halt. When you kill the spark, the engine still has momentum, so it's going to coast down slowly to a stop. Now, while it's coasting down to a stop, the piston is still moving, the valves are still moving, so the engine is still going to be drawing fuel in from the carburetor, pumping it through the engine and into the exhaust. Now, when that happens, when it pumps the fuel and air into the exhaust, it then combusts in the exhaust because the exhaust is very hot, thereby creating a very loud and irritating backfire. So the purpose of the backfire solenoids is to prevent that backfire. Now, the way they do that is by shutting off fuel flow through the carburetor uh, when you turn the key off. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull out these solenoids. I'm going to pull out both of them so you can just see the differences between the two because they are different. And just a bit of a tip. If you're going to be working on these a lot, uh, this is a half inch wrench. It fits the Nikki and the Walbro style backfire solenoids. However, these uh, stubbier Walbro solenoids, uh, the in order to get the wrench onto the flats in order to get it off you need to grind down a standard wrench because there's not quite enough space in there. For the Nikki, you can just use a standard wrench. There's plenty of space. So this is my wrench that was specifically ground down for this purpose. So we're going to use the Walbro LMT and yes it, it's, it looks quite bad on the inside. This is just a parts carburetor. We're going to use this one as a demonstration because I don't have to undo two extra screws to get it apart. So if you look inside here You'll notice that we have our main jet on the side rather than on the end. This is uh, how Walbro does it. And the solenoid has a plunger on the end. And that plunger, when it's installed, fits right in there like that. And the way this works is by blocking the flow of fuel through the emulsion tube uh, on the carburetor. So these solenoids are wired into a key on ignition source. So when the key is on, the solenoid is energized, plunger is retracted. This allows flow, fuel to flow freely through the carburetor like it would in any normal carburetor and like it would in the older carburetors. When you turn the key off, the plunger extends, blocking the flow of fuel through the emulsion tube uh, and into the carburetor. That way when you turn off the key and your engine is coasting down, the, it's not drawing fuel in from the carburetor which can then get pumped out into the exhaust and cause a backfire. 
Now I know some of you might have a question and that is why the older engines didn't have backfire solenoids and this is a question that gets brought up a lot when people are talking about deleting these solenoids. Well there's a very simple explanation for that. What I have here is your run-of-the-mill Walbro LMT carburetor. This is an older style carburetor typically used on the Briggs & Stratton flathead. Now if you pay attention to the lawnmower engines and which ones have backfire solenoids, what you'll notice is just about every single one that has overhead valves tends to have a backfire solenoid. The reason for this is very simple. In the old flatheads, they simply weren't that efficient. They were very durable, but not very efficient. So while they would uh, draw fuel in from the carburetor while coasting down, they didn't have a tendency to push it out into the exhaust, causing the backfire. But when they started going to overhead valve engines, the overhead valve engines were more efficient, which meant that they suddenly had the problem of the engine pumping fuel and air through the engine into the exhaust, creating the backfire. So this was a very simple solution to that problem. So now that I've covered what they do and how they work, let's talk about the ways that they tend to fail and the reliability. Now if you work on small engines a lot, you're going to see a lot of these solenoids failing. And a lot of people really hate these because they do tend to have a pretty high failure rate on neglected machines and they aren't exactly the cheapest to replace. That being said, if you actually maintain your machine, they have a very high reliability rate. Um, quick confession, neither of these solenoids actually came off these particular carburetors. The carburetors were in the parts pile. I stole these solenoids off other engines just for the purposes of this video. This solenoid in particular is off my 06 Craftsman, which has over 2,000 hours on it. It's 100% original. It's never been serviced, never had to do anything to it, and it still works like new. So if you take care of your machines, you shouldn't have these solenoids fail with any regularity at all, if ever. Now that being said, how do they fail? Well, typically when these fail, they get stuck either up or down. Now, being that they are at the bottom of the carburetor, any sediment, any contaminants, any moisture in the carburetor will tend to gather in the bottom of the solenoid. So they either, either they stick or they rust, and the rust is really the bigger issue. What often happens is they'll get some moisture in the carburetor, and the moisture will gather in the bottom of the solenoid, and it will rust the spring. So what will happen is you can compress it and you can pull it back out manually, but the solenoid will not uh, extend on its own. And that's that's a very common way that they fail, especially on the Nikki solenoids in particular. I haven't seen that happen quite as much on the Walbro solenoids, but it can happen. If they don't rust, the uh, next most common problem is that they get just get stuck, either up or down. Now, if they get stuck extended, what will happen is it's going to be constantly blocking fuel flow from the carburetor. If your car engine is able to start at all, it's probably only going to run on choke. Um, but in my, my experience, 99% of the time, it won't even start on choke if the plunger is stuck extended. If the plunger gets stuck down, and I have seen this a number of times as well, What's going to happen is it's going to basically act like there is no backfire solenoid. The engine will continue to operate perfectly normally, but when you turn it, uh, but when you turn the engine off with the engine when while it's hot, you're going to tend to have backfires occurring. Now, as far as electrically speaking, uh, I do see wiring problems on occasion with the mower, but I rarely see the solenoid itself fail electrically. Um, it is possible for this plunger to get stuck part way up or down. In that case, you're going to basically have the carburetor act like it's clogged. Um, it's going to, you know, surge, spit, sputter, the usual clogged carburetor symptoms. So that's just something you want to check. Make sure uh, when you, if you're working on your carburetor, when you remove these, make sure that the plunger moves freely and it's able to extend back on its own. So there's a couple of misconceptions that I see a lot when it comes to these backfire signs. The first is that if one fails, it's going to flood out your carburetor. The second is that the backfire solenoid somehow regulates the flow of fuel into the engine. Neither of these are true at all. They can't be true. 
So in order to, to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to remove the bowl on my old school Walgo LMT, the one that's for a flathead that doesn't have a backfire solenoid. Now you look at these carburetors side by side, and I know this one isn't very clean either. These are all parts carburetors. Look at them side by side, you'll notice they look almost identical because they are almost identical. The only real difference between these is that the older one has the main jet built into the emulsion tube, whereas the newer one has a separate emulsion tube and they put the main jet on the side. They just did this so that they could clear the plunger on the back fire solenoid. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. And regardless of which carburetor you had on this, fuel flow into the bowl is controlled by the float and the needle and seat. That's it. There's This does not do any regulation of the fuel. If you've got a flooding problem, it's caused by the needle and seat. Now if that doesn't convince you enough, I can tell you even more reasons why it's not possible for this to be caused by this fuel solenoid, by this backfire solenoid. Now even if the backfire solenoid has a perfect seal into the emulsion tube or the main jet, which it doesn't. Notice that this uh, plunger is metal on the end and the emulsion tube is also metal. This isn't going to be a perfect seal. There's going to be some leakage. But even if this was a perfect seal, there's a number of other vents and passages that link the bowl of the carburetor to the intake. So let's say hypothetically that this was able to get a perfect seal to the emulsion tube and that you were trying to somehow control the flow of fuel with this with this uh, solenoid. It wouldn't work because the fuel would still be able to get into the intake through the other passages in the carburetor. I don't know where the idea that these somehow control the flow of fuel into your engine came from, but it's very pervasive and it's, it's just wrong. It leads a lot of people down the wrong paths and they make a lot of bad decisions. Uh, thinking that this is the case. It's not. You, this solenoid, the only purpose of it is to stop backfires when you turn the engine off. That is it. If you've got a carburetor that is flooding out or leaking fuel into the engine, you're going to be looking at most likely a needle and seat issue. And this applies to whether you've got a carburetor with a backfire solenoid or a carburetor without the backfire solenoid. So at this point, I just know I'm going to get this question. Can I bypass a backfire solenoid and how do I bypass the backfire solenoid? I'm going to tell you right now, I don't recommend doing this at all. So if you do it, you know, whatever happens, that's on you. Um, I will say this, if you decide to bypass the backfire solenoid, you are going to be, your engine's going to have a tendency to want to backfire when you shut it off. If that's something you can live with, that's up to you. Uh, I have heard that throttling it down about to about half throttle will help it prevent that, but I've never tried it myself. Now for the Walbro LMTs, I've heard of a lot of guys just going and getting uh, a normal bolt and replacing the solenoid altogether. The big thing you need to watch out for for that, if you do that, is to make sure that there's still going to be adequate fuel flow from this main jet on the side into the emulsion tube. If the bolt is too long, it'll block off that passage and your engine will not be able to get fuel. Now for the Nikki's, the Nikki's are a little more complicated. Um, I have seen some that don't have um, the backfire soy, but they usually have a different bowl. Now in the past, what I've done is I've found that most times you can simply pull this, pl this rubber plunger off the end and it'll flow enough fuel to operate normally. Uh, however, if you've got a broken solenoid uh, and you just want to get the engine running, you can cut off the, uh, the plunger shank flush and then just stick it back in. It'll work the same. I don't recommend doing that if your plunger still works at all though because th then you've just wasted uh, a perfectly good uh, backfire solenoid. Um, Personally, I always fix the backfire solenoids because most of the mowers that I work on, I later sell. And a lot of the people that show up to buy these mowers, many times they've never driven a riding mower before. And they won't throttle down the engine when they shut it off, even if they have. 
So what happens is they drive their own mower around, they go to shut it off, and when it shuts off it backfires. A lot of people don't know how lawnmowers work, so when something backfires like that, it's a massive red flag and either they try to talk you down on the price or they simply aren't interested in buying the lawnmower anymore. Plus, backfires are incredibly annoying and I personally, to be perfectly honest, don't throttle my engine down before shutting it off either. So I always make sure my backfire solenoids work. So hopefully this has helped you guys. Uh, that was the whole goal of this video. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, leave it down in the description below.